Sorry. And we're live again, dude. Right. So Please continue. Little... Sorry, Sorry about, about that. that. Where were we? What were we? Oh, the dis disconnected society. Yeah, we were talking about your disconnect with society as a whole. So, um, yeah, I think that um, the, the, um, I was really disappointed. Uh, I was really disappointed at how certain communities treated me, uh, like for example, the God community or the so-called vampire community. Mm -hmm. You know, all those people. I would I would go to their shows and go to their clubs, etc. And they they would be always saying, yeah, this guy gives us a bad name and he shouldn't be there in that club. And they, they would try their best to have me uh, cancel from those places. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, this is why I, um, you know, um, I decided not to go to, uh, to, to, be, to be social anymore. Um, and I tried, I tried to... Uh, to keep a low profile and uh but uh, like three or four years ago um i uh, was uh, working uh, in uh, mog uh, another name and uh, um, it was not the first time that i was actually kicked out of a, of a job because of my past but th this was the last straw i guess so i decided not to even try anymore mm. And um, actually, I was I was fired not because I uh, because of my past because there are no legal grounds for this, but they fired me because it was a Catholic institute and I had uh, I, I had published the Satanic Bible in French. Mm. So they used this to say, okay, uh, we cannot have this person working no more for for us because. Of his activities as a publisher mm. which was kind of, kind of funny because they just couldn't legally use the fact that uh, um, I had been uh, convicted of murder mm. so they used that and this is when I decided okay uh, I, I don't even understand why I'm even trying anymore I'm not you know uh, I know how to write I know how to publish books I know how to edit books I know how to paint and I'm just going to use all that knowledge to try to make uh, a living and this is uh, when I started to uh, organize myself and uh, create my uh, website mm -hmm. so um, uh, it was the best idea I ever had yeah mm -hmm. wow you got any questions pulled up um yeah, uh, Sean Blaine asked, "What would you, what do you want for your body after death? Like, would do you want to be cremated, buried, sold, donated, etc.? Do you have any plans or wants with what you're going to do with yourself after death?" Definitely, a great question because uh, it's really interesting. Um, if I was a millionaire, I would have this huge mausoleum built, and I would all those massive locks on the door so nobody could actually <laughs> try to open it and get inside <laughs> and uh, but uh, I would build a side uh, you know a, a side chapel where people could actually get inside and maybe see my paintings and mm. you know uh, see several objects that I created when I was alive and uh, and uh, I don't know maybe uh, burn candles or shed their blood or whatever they want to do mm -hmm. or have sex i don't know this is cool this would be cool but uh i want to yeah. visit your grave already um, don't don't die anytime soon but <laughs> this sounds fun <laughs> no that, that would be the dream thing the thing i would not want is to donate my uh, body to science because i know what they do to uh to your body when you donate it to science i've seen it because uh, i've been to the place where they do it and they actually cut you up in several pieces and for for, for example your uh, mandible goes for uh practicing dentists mm. and your torso goes for heart surgery and your limbs goes for another specialty so they actually cut you up and dispatch you in several different services 
people don't know that, but uh, um, the guy, the, the actually there was a huge scandal a couple of years ago because they they found out that the place in Paris, the where they keep all those bodies, most of the bodies were half eaten by rats. Mm. Oh no! Yeah. Dang. Yeah. So this is what happens when you donate your body to science. Mm. Usually, not a good idea. Yeah. So I wouldn't do that. What? Except there's one exception because I really admire his work. It's uh, Gunther von Hagens. He's the guy who invented invented uh, plastination. Uh, maybe you've seen his uh, expo. It's called Body Works, mm-hmm. and it's those uh, bodies that are preserved like in wax, mm-hmm. and uh, they don't have the skin on anymore. Mm-hmm. So you just see the tissues and the the um, the muscles mm. uh, and all those things so it's fascinating i've been to his expo a few times and he actually accept the, uh, accepts donations oh wow and uh, he has a factory to prepare the corpses and it's uh, it's in uh, east germany mm-hmm. so yeah why not yeah this would be acceptable for mm-hmm. me yeah. That's a great yeah. answer, dude. That's awesome. Uh, what do you or think? I can you... give my head to uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Like, there you uh, go. <laughs> you know, they have the uh, Peter Curtin, so uh-huh. they could get the head of the Vampire of Paris. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> what do you think would have happened had you not been caught? Oh, yeah. Well, definitely I would be seeing some kind of encyclopedia of serial killers. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, you know, I have no regrets, but at the same time, I know that, you know, things happen for a reason. So I guess that my arrest happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Um, and I, and I kind of scanned through your book. I didn't have a chance. I was going to try to fully read it, but we've been so swamped with work, but I scanned through because yeah. prior to this, it was my knowledge you had one murder. But as I scanned through the book, it seemed like there was a couple references to other ones. Um, And then my question for you was, what about statute of limitations? Are you you fearful that when you bring that out in your book, that that could unhash something from the past and cause you more problem in the future? Actually, in the book, I'm talking about murder attempts. Mm. Attempts. Not actual numbers. Got you. So there's a statute of limitation of uh, uh, 15 years for that. Got you. So I was fully conscious. Plus, I'm not giving out names or anything. So yeah. Uh, I asked um, a lawyer before I wrote uh, my book because the book you 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 got is the English version. But before the English version, there was there was of course a French version mm-hmm. of this book. Uh, so when I wrote this French version, I made sure that uh, nobody in the book would get me in trouble. Got you. Yeah, that was my question right there. Um, do you have any more pulled up? Um, um, I got just a few more, man. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Um, are Are you uh, a Satanist, and how has re- religion influenced what you did? Or nice. what's going on? Aside from the Dharma thing that we discussed, um, because that is a... Um, a part of a religion. So, I guess what is yeah. what part does religion play in your life? So my parents were atheists, so I wasn't raised in religion per se. Mm-hmm. So I had to find my own, you know, spiritual path, and I found it in uh, graveyards. So for me, uh, well, in the beginning, I was really interested in Satanism. And European Satanism is really different from uh, American Satanism or the Church of Satan or the, mm-hmm. the Satanic Temple or orga- other organization. It, it's, um, people call, call it uh, traditional Satanism mm-hmm. and it's the belief that there are entities that you can invoke and that you can pray to and uh, that can uh, help you in several uh, aspects of your life, whether it's destruction or creation. Um, Of course, those entities are identified as demons, uh, but uh, it's just a name. For me, they have no notion of good or bad or evil. You know, in religion, like, 
like in other things, people tend to anthropomorphize things. And uh, the word anthropomorphize means making something, giving human qualities to something that is not human. Mm -hmm. For example, you would say that, uh, you know, um, animals are able to feel love or, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's anthropomorphism. Mm -hmm. You actually project your human feelings mm -hmm. to a beast that... You personify it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's the same with religion. They think that God is a projection of humans. And I think it's really arrogant to mm. say that. Because when you say that, when you say that God is a, uh, a being of love or, or compassion, etc., you, you actually project your own feelings to something that is supposed to be so above you, you know? Mm. And um, the only guy who actually uh, got, got this was Lovecraft when he wrote about the, the ancient ones. Mm -hmm. uh, in his books, you know, in, in the, the, the Lovecraftian mites, uh, the elder ones and the ancient ones, they are uh, totally alien to mankind. They are hostile. And for me, the, the notion of God is the same. For me, God is, uh, God hates humankind. And uh, why, would he, why would he allow Auschwitz? Uh, if God uh, was uh, so merciful and so full of compassion for humans. That's a good See question. What I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, it's just a human projection of feelings, etc. And I do believe in entities and I do believe in uh, energies, but I don't think that they're driven by notions such as good and evil. Good and evil are notions that were created by men to control other men. Mm tell them you have to do this otherwise you're not part of our community anymore yeah okay so you have to obey to our rules and it's a power tool and mm. religion has always been a power tool whatever they say whatever the there's always an agenda mm -hmm. and the agenda is made by those who make the rules those who wrote the books the Quran, the bible those who uh, actually uh uh, uh organize the religions they have their agenda and they impose those rules on the people who follow them mm. and when you understand all this system it's a system it's, and it's easy to understand honestly uh, then your perspective on spirituality and religion is totally different mm -hmm. yeah. right i agree I, I the only entity that i have I have a connection with with uh, that I absolutely worship is uh, death mm. because I've seen it. It's real for me. It's really real. I walked in the shadow of death for so many years. So, and if there would be a, a religion right now on earth that would more or less uh, reflect my spirituality, it would be Santa Muerte. Mm. Yeah. Because I, I believe that I'm protected by death, because I I, I have uh, you know I have done a good, and it's I don't know. I often yeah. wear my uh, Santa Muerte pendant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for me it's a protection. Yeah, yeah. Well, I get that. We will got a couple more, Nico, and I'm gonna let you go, man. I really appreciate your time, man. It's been very interesting. And I've, I've gone through some questions, but a lot of them you've already covered. So let's try yeah. to find one or two more. And then, uh, um, so the people that are close to you, are, do you, are they safe around you? Like, uh, that's one of the, because I've seen, like, if you look at pictures of you when you got arrested, your eyes look black. You look, I mean, you look evil. That's the only way. But you see pictures of you now, you look at times happy. You know, you look like you're enjoying your life. You're just at times happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying, Sorry, you're, you're yeah. obviously enjoying your life. You're just into like I'm into dark shit. Me and my wife are into dark things. We are collectors of yeah. bonds and a lot of things that people think are weird. You know, so but for the people around you, are they safe? Like the people that you consider family, which I know um, you obviously are in a relationship, that kind of thing. 
when when uh, you're part of my family and family doesn't mean blood family because I, I, I have no sympathy for my blood family mm. but when you're part of the family that I have chosen yeah you're totally safe of mm. course and I, I will protect to pr protect you to death because mm. you're your family uh, mm. but uh, yeah you're, you're, you're talking about the picture of me when I was arrested is the same person mm. and uh, it's the, the exact same person except that the things around me are now very different mm -hmm. but deep inside it's the same the same soul the same per the same person the black eyes i can still have them uh say for example so someone uh, tries to hurt my family then the the eyes back the the black eye, the, the eyes will turn black again mm -hmm. so what i mean mm -hmm. so uh, yeah um, I'm safe for my family. Probably not for people who will try to hurt me or hurt my family. Definitely yeah. not, and even worse than when uh, what I used to be. Yeah. yeah. No, I get I get that a hundred percent. Um, so I guess we'll end on the note. Like obviously now you're doing art. I see you're doing some action figures, which are man, all your stuff, dude. You're so creative yeah. and so talented. Um, so let's talk about that where people can find stuff. I have some books that I'm going to, uh, you sent me yep. two, two of everything you have. We're going to keep half of them because we want them for our personal collection. The other half will sell, but, uh, tell people where they can find you. Um, some of the stuff you're doing right now, some of the things you're working on. So I got this, uh, uh company called serial pleasures. And at first it was a, I, I created this company because we were creating, uh, uh, adult toys, mm. okay, 